Yeah, we are. Oh, we are live. Oh, oh we'll uh, sure. forget about a countdown, everybody. Um, What's going welcome on? Welcome to the Gatekeepers. We are your host, Dan. I am Billy. And uh, we also forgot to set our levels. We apologize. Sorry. What is I going think we on should be good. World? And uh, I'm good. We got another little person sitting here in the corner. We do. Hello. We do. We do. Go ahead and introduce yourself, good sir. My name is Corey Gentry. I started Gentry Farmhouse about five years ago, and yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Sorry, I've never spoken a podcast before. <laughs> You're good. You're good. You're good. I also You're didn't good. mean to go live that uh, that early. Yeah. But uh, for everybody tuning in, this is the Gatekeepers Podcast. We talk all about fencing tips, tools, tricks, techniques, all that jazz. And uh, today, we have a fellow co-worker of ours. Um, we all work together on the fence line, and uh, we, get, we get shit done. Simple as, uh, simple as that, really. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So um, uh, we're going to start this off with, uh, guys, give us a like, follow, share, subscribe, hit that little ring bell down at the bottom, all of it. Um, <laughs> every little bit helps. <laughs> We're having fun with our new toys that we got, obviously, yeah. that you see. Yeah. Uh, but uh, today we're going to be talking with Corey, and uh, we're just going to get a uh, we're going to get a background story of uh, what got you into this in, um, like into this industry, uh, where you see yourself in five years, what 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 is your favorite part about the industry, and you know, just kind of go from there. Uh, but with that said, we'll uh, we'll let you kind of take, take it, it away, away. brother. Um, give us. Give us your backstory of the job you were at right before you got into fencing and how you got into fencing and moving forward. That is a very loaded um, story. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. As much as you would like to share yeah. at least. <laughs> uh, man, my background is a lot of offshore work and a little bit of construction and stuff sprinkled in here or there. A lot of sales work. I've... I've had a lot of different jobs that were, you know, you look in the old days in the 50s and 60s and you know, bouncing from jobs to job has, you know, always been kind of like bad taboo to where you see it more, uh, more socially acceptable nowadays. Absolutely. Know? Yeah. But Absolutely. I've always had that kind of old school mentality. I've always kind of felt bad that I've had a lot of different jobs and a lot of different things, you know, where the bulk of it was being offshore or whatnot. But I've done a lot of sales gigs. I've door to door, you know, sold my heart out with having thousands of doors slammed in your face and everything in between. And um, the way the fencing side of it kind of started was, um, oh God, I don't know, back in 2018, uh, this everything kind of went haywire, like in life, like went through a divorce, like my mom died, like a lot of just wild, just, just rough freaking year. And I had a side hustle to my normal business called Gentry Farmhouse. And what it was, uh, I built farmhouse style furniture, man, like uh, tables and beds and, you know, coffee bookcases and just random. If someone would pay me to build it, I'd build it for them. And, in, and you did that all in this room right here, right? And this yeah. room yeah. that is now a garage used to be a full-blown woodworking shop. I mean, I had tables lined all the way down this wall with a peninsula over there with band saws and grinders and chop saws and a table saw over there. And I mean, it's a home gym now, but, you know, yeah. back then that was my side hustle. I'd make a couple extra hundred bucks a week just, you know, just to give me a hobby to do at night. And yeah. uh, after life kind of went chaotic, I... Uh, went through that divorce and everything and it was just I didn't know how I was going to pay my bills I didn't know how I was going to keep my house I didn't know how I was gonna, you know the house I just got uh, like built in 2018 <laughs> um, like I had no idea I was going to keep it you know from being on a joint income to a single income and it really just kind of started from, from that was you know I had the business license that I had from the side hustle of building furniture and um, I went and got like a cheap business insurance and I just started advertising hey, build anything you want like, you know, just whatever. And uh, I built raised flower beds for people. I built uh, a, a king size bed one time, several desks and stuff like that. And then it, uh, somebody asked me if I could build a fence one day. I was like, absolutely. Sure can. I had no idea how to build a <laughs> Now, fence. how do so, I build a fence? I had helped on a few in the past, you know what I mean? But I had a really good construction. I'm, I'm very crafty with my hands. I know how to do stuff. I'm, and uh, I was like, absolutely. So I was, 
I was like, you know, took the measurements of it and I went back home and I YouTube and Googled and everything of how to quote a fence job and how to, you know, how, 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 do, I, how do I do this? And, and I cost of materials, 50%. All right, all right cool. There we go. Threw a number out there. She took it and I was like, awesome. Oh shit, I have no idea how to build a fence now. <laughs> so I, I, I just got on YouTube University and made a few phone calls and just kind of figured it out. And then, um, here are five years later and, you know, we've gotten deep into, you know, the technology of the fence world and learning about different things and trying to, you know, just be better every day. And man, five years later, that's all we do now is fences and, you know, fencing related products. And hell, we just won best in Pensacola. We beat our yearly goal already for the year in sales. I mean, I want to do a million in sales. We're probably going to close the year out at 1.2. I mean, it's, yeah, thank you. That's all of us. Though. <laughs> That's loud. <laughs> it it doesn't stop unless you stop it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's just fencing. Yeah. All right. Heck all right. Yeah. All right. So what? What was the? What was the biggest like light bulb moment? Like aha, in your fencing career? Because I know we all have one. And what? Okay. In which context? In which context was like, oh, I can do this, or oh, damn, I just made some money. Uh, I can do this. Like, yeah. what was like the biggest like, boom? Like the light bulb went off, and it was just like after the first couple jobs. What was? What I was... would say the second. So my first two jobs were actually in my neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We're actually in this neighborhood. We're on the corner. Uh, one was for a realtor guy. Uh, he actually sent, I would say, a hundred grand of work my way over nice. the last five years. Nice, nice, nice. Um, and uh. I built his fence, did a four foot Gothic style picket on like a two inch space, you know, down the line. And again, mine is like my first or second real fence I've built. Then talk mad game that I had this on lock and you know, I kind of swinged it. <laughs> and uh, when it was all said and done, I looked, I'm like, damn, that thing looks really good. And mind you, I didn't have a trailer. I didn't have tools. Everything yeah. was borrowed. I had one drill that I owned and I had one pair of post hole diggers that I just wouldn't pair that I just had lying around the house. And that, yeah. that drill you still have, don't you? That's Miss D. Miss D. Yeah. Mrs. D. Miss D. Mrs. D. Good old still trusty have, DeWalt. Yeah, Miss D. Um, we actually still have the post hole diggers too. Yeah, we yep. do. They're old yeah. and wooden, bent and falling apart. They're just too, they're too big. That's what started it. They got all That's what started it. Uh, so back to that story. What was the, like, what was the biggest like aha moment like whenever you were done? seeing all these four foot gothic pickets like at like a crisp height like just going like 80 feet across the back line because the guy wanted to see this backyard and still even didn't want to you know stick the privacy across the back wooded area so right he went with the four foot gothic on a two inch space and when it was all said and done and you could see like a line just crisp like you can look at the line and you see one post that's yeah. the goal you see one yeah. one picket one post all you see and like my second solid like fence I'm like oh that's fun I like that I'd say that was a really big moment. Like this, is, this looks like I got this. This isn't this isn't hard at all. Okay. And um, then it was really just like one of the greatest things about fencing. I'll say I like is how you're in a different place every couple of days. You might get on a big job, uh, but there's a lot of instant gratification with fencing that you you go, you sell your heart out, you bid this job, you win it, you go back, you crunch all the numbers, you figure out what you got to have, you got to have this and that, or you, you build materials, your costs are good sold, you. You figure everything out, and then you, you it comes day of install, and you just and you execute everything, and it just and it's really cool that whenever the job is done, and you can look back, and your customers walk, and they've given you the thumbs up review and all that stuff, and look back into this fence, you're like, yeah, I just did that. Yeah. And yeah. Now you're on the next one. It's a great feeling. It um, is, and especially uh, Billy and I were talking about this in an earlier episode. Is when you're driving around town, and you're like. Hey, I did that. <laughs> I built that fence. Look at that one. Yeah. It's got that that's gotten so far to the point now that my kids will point it out. Like, Dad, you built that fence over the uh, I did. Uh, oh, yeah, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. <laughs> yeah, we did. Um so as far as like the business side of things, what was your uh what was your biggest like your biggest break? Oh, okay. Uh, it was a very l big learning curve. It was something that was masqueraded. It was an absolute cluster F, but it masqueraded as a big break. Okay. 
and it was a very hard learning curve. And it was my first big commercial project. Okay. My first big commercial project was like three years ago. And I've been in the game for about two years now, you know, two and a half years at this point, you know, two, two and a half years. And it was, you know, it was right in the middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. So materials were hard to get. We're trying to grasp for any straw that we could get. Excuse me. Sorry. And uh, I was driving on the road and I seen a commercial project going on. I seen them building this apartment complex. I'm like, huh. Well, I got an estimate. Let me all stop down the way back and just see what's up. You know, it was on my old side of town that I grew up on. And part of me was kind of upset they had just destroyed this. I knew the people who owned this property before. And it was a big, beautiful lot. You know, only one house on it. Now they just put, you know, 120 apartments on it. It's like, well, yeah. shit, but well, let's go check it out. So I remember just walking onto this job site, not knowing anybody or anyone. Found the, uh, the boss man trailer. And uh, went and knocked on the door. And I hear, come in! Kind of walked in, and there you see is like this old burly dude just sitting there smoking cigarettes on the phone, yelling at somebody. <laughs> Papers just stacked to the ceiling, blueprints just like everywhere. What do you want? I was like, um, hey, uh, sir, how you doing? My name's Corey Gentry of Digi Farmhouse. I just, man, I see you guys got a lot of construction going on. I'm a fencing contractor. I just want to stop by and give you my card and see if you have anything that you need and da da da. And he. It was on the phone. I didn't want to interrupt him. He's like, oh, yeah, give me your card. And so I gave him a card. I was like, hey, give me a call if you have any questions. All right, what will I do? And I watched him throw it in a stack of cards on his desk that were that tall. I'm like, well, there goes that. <laughs> and that's about as far as that conversation is going to go. So then you fast forward. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I don't know what it is, but you, know, you miss 100% of the shots that you don't take. So. Uh, day and a half, two days later, man, I'm in a meeting with the uh, director of Lowe's, and he's talking to me about being coming a, a contractor for Lowe's and installing their fences, and you know, trying to figure out what we need to do to get that on. And I have my phone on my briefcase next to me, and it's just buzzing like crazy. And I had, we had it on silent or on vibrate, but I could still hear. It. And he's like, "You need to get that." I was like, "No, no, no, it's fine." On I'd like third or fourth time, he's like, dude, just get it. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. So I looked down, I did not recognize the number. Out of state number. I was like, ah, it's not important. It's it's fine. So I sit through that meeting with him and I get back out to my truck and I'm really listening to voicemails and it's the uh, the uh, the home office up north from this construction company. And they're like, Hey, you do fencing, right? I was like, uh, yeah, and they said, "All right, cool. Uh, we're gonna send you some emails with some bits." And the next thing I know, my email gets flooded with all these takeoffs and blueprints and all these different layouts and designs. And the, it was all the blueprints for the entire project, and I had to shift through and find all the fencing stuff. <laughs> like two. Here's pages. everything we have. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Exactly. Here's a PDF of every blueprint that's been signed off on. Uh, yours are gonna be somewhere on the, in the seventies. I'm like, okay. So then, like, we start bidding the fencing. There's chain link, there's vinyl, there's pool aluminum, there's all these different components. And then, which was cool, it was awesome. It was, it was really big trying to figure out. Mind you, it was in the middle of COVID. I mean, you couldn't get any materials. Yeah. Right? And that was such a big learning curve on that one. Like, I mean, if you don't, this is, oh, man. And then they ended up asking us to do all the cabinets because I used to do cabinet work. They're like, can you do the cabinets? Like, well, yeah, I can't. Excellent. I'm, we're going to find, can you do this? Like, well, yeah. So then we ended up doing the fencing. Then we ended up doing the cabinets. Then we ended up doing the door, installing the doors and the trim work. And I'm like, yeah, uh, we got to start talking about money because I'm doing a lot of stuff for you guys. It's not, <laughs> that we're not getting paid on. I know I'm going off for a second. No, 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 no. You are all right. No. You're all right. But Keep going. that was, I really learned a lot with that job because I almost lost everything. Mm -hmm. what was cloaked in this big, beautiful six figure, you know, commercial job of which learning about draws and, you know, and scheduled payments and all mm -hmm. that you learn. A good old 90 pay. Real, luckily it was net 30, net 60, but okay. it was net 30 at the, from the 20th. So if you get done the job on the 25th. Yeah. That's technically net what? Like F almost 50, five, 55. 55 yeah. yeah. 60 now. Yeah. And I was like, and whenever you're in your first year and a half, two years of business, you don't have the cash flow for that. So it was a big hurdle of trying to still do everything that they want to do and stay in their good graces because they have multiple of these complexes and you're thinking long game while still trying to make all your, your residential clients happy. And all. So I, I would say that was like a big learning moment was 
thinking I could just jump into the commercial world when he, when he wasn't really ready. It was, gr- it was a phenomenal learning experience, but holy hell, it was rough. Yeah, it's yeah. a whole whole different ball game. There. Whole yes. different ball game. Um, so, uh, what is your absolute favorite style of fence to build? Like hands down, no dig or uh, concrete? Anything. <laughs> anything. 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 What's your you, favorite? You can answer both. The no answer dig both. and concrete. Uh, no dig's got to be by aluminum. Absolutely, just so much. Or it's a, it's fun to install. It mm-hmm. absolutely is. Um, a favorite kind of my favorite fence to install, regardless. Uh, are the hard ones. <laughs> yeah, it is. Are the ones that <laughs> the basket weaves. <laughs> <laughs> that was beautiful, man. That was a pain. Um, no, 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 no. Just the, just the overall, the hard ones, the ones that test your knowledge. Mm-hmm. The ones that test your critical thinking, the ones that make you really sit back and like, okay, everything is going to crap. How am I going to fix this without making myself look dumb or looking like a buffoon in front of the client, or you know, just the ones that are really just going to test. You know, whenever you own the business, there is no, you know, make make Pass a lifeline and, and pass yeah. it to somebody else. Like you've got to figure it out. And there is, in, in some scenarios, that's why I love construction so much, because there is not a blueprint to how to fix every single situation. You've got to be able to think on the top of your head and, and be able to come up with something from nothing. Yeah. It's those jobs that I love. I don't care what kind of install. It could be a basic wood job, but if it's kicking my ass and it's making me really think and get away from that cookie cutter mentality of, okay, why is this not working and how do I fix this? If it makes me think, I love it. Yeah. If it absolutely just, just pisses me off, I love it. <laughs> I'm a sucker for pain. Man. Yeah, I'm I'm absolutely. Serious, you all. I that's, love to be in pain, brother. That, that's great. <laughs> that is great. You're gonna have fun with that thing. Over I there, love this you? thing. I love this thing. <laughs> <laughs> this thing is too good. So, what is uh, what is your favorite part about the fence industry as a whole? This is kind of where you and I differ a little bit, where you, you enjoy being solo and rocking out your own thing and doing your thing. I love being in the field, shoulder to shoulder in the suck. It reminds me of right offshore. Right in the suck of it. Yeah, embrace the freaking suck. Man, it reminds me of being an offshore and just you're out there with you and your buddy and it's, you, you got to figure it out. Yeah. You do or you don't. Yeah. And... That's a, I, probably a lot of my critical thinking comes from is just the fact that you're, I've spent so many years working offshore that it's, yeah. Oh. Everything good? Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so what, uh, <clears throat> what do you think would be a good, uh, a good, like, way for the industry to mold and change moving forward? And I'm talking about, like, straight up, like the industry, like not us out on the fence line, installing fences, shoulder to shoulder, like talking about moving forward and the whole fence world as a, like as a whole, like what would, what would you change if you had the power to change it today? Okay. Um, I would, as a whole, not as individual businesses, yeah. but as a, as a whole, One of the hardest things that we run into, and you, this conversation can go one of two ways, is the fact that we work in an unregulated market. Mm -hmm. It's 100% unregulated. Like, yeah, cool, you have ASTM standards and you have, you know, the rules and regulations things you have to do, but there's there's nothing to enforce. Absolutely. You know, and I'm not. I'm sure there may be some states out there that may require some form of a contract or license or some form of something. uh, That is actually something that there's been lots of meetings on and talks and you know, talks about, about, you know, how, you know, if you're going to have a roof put on your house, like overall there has to be a GC that signs off on that. And it has to be, and it has to be built to a certain codes, current specification, if it fails inspections and they can rip it off and do it again. Right. Right. There's nothing with that. Mm-hmm. And so many people and customers get ripped off from shoddy work. Now everybody in the world is, a hundred percent to blame because I guarantee you there, somebody out there has done something like you went back. Damn, I wish I, I should have done that better. I should have done different. You can always Monday morning quarterback yourself. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the purely unregulated people that are not licensed, not insured, not workman's comp that go out there and just you know bid jobs hella low 
and you know, and they don't care about you know, ripping customers off and taking the money. You know, there, 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 there's none of that. Absolutely, people make mistakes and businesses fall on hard times. There's always crazy stuff, but that person who just does not care, desires to grab a quick buck, throw a, a post in the ground, not use any concrete, not even you know that that's the kind of thing that really hurts the industry. Is the fact that we are bidding a job that most people won't do just because you're it's it's it, 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 there is times where this job is absolutely hard. But it's unregulated. That anybody can just go and call themselves a fencer and take people's money, while the legitimate companies have to show up and show out, no matter what. Right. You have to. Right. Reputation, because right. there's always going to be a, two chucks in a truck down the road that will do it for beer money. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And when, when this is how we feed our kids, and this is how we our livelihoods, and that we actually genuinely care about this. You know, I love fencing. Like I've done a lot of wild ass jobs in my time. I absolutely, I, I thoroughly enjoy it. It's it's fun craftsmanship, but it's not like you know cabinets where you have to be within a thirty second of an inch. You know what I mean? But it's still you can leave your mark. Mm-hmm. You can leave yeah. your signature on it, and you can really make your name if you have that desire to just to hustle. Mm-hmm. So I love the fencing industry, and I love, it, but there, I, and some people say that. Uh, Moving to a more regulated market is going to do nothing but hurt the ones who want to do it the right way. So th- there's talks on it on both sides of that, and I can see it from both sides. I really can. But at the end of it, you know, I've, I've only been employed now, you know, self-employed now for about five years doing this, and you know, we've done a lot of good stuff. And but that's just one of those things that always comes back to is that you know, and people will say, oh, you can just make sure your stuff's good and to hell with everybody else. Like, well, yeah, absolutely. Your work will always speak for yourself, and people always call you based on your reputation and all. But at the end of the day, that almighty dollar speaks. Yeah. And somebody's cutting you out by it thousands, does. and I mean, yeah, just because they're non-regulated, and it's like, I'd, li- yeah, I would like to see this go to a more regulated market, and okay, cool, business are cool. You get to pay an extra fifteen hundred dollars a year, outstanding. I'll pay it. Yeah, that's worth it. To, I'll absolutely pay it to keep to, to keep, keep it under like at least somewhat of a like standard. We pay a thousand dollars a year just to offer freaking I beams. I will absolutely yeah. pay you know as a fee to. You know, to to make to make this more into a regular yeah, absolutely. simple, right? Simple. It's just one right. more damn like hell to be licensed in Alabama. You have to have three different freaking licenses, state, <laughs> county, and city. What's one more? Let's right. be honest, right? See, and that's where we move into like the whole like certification versus mm-hmm. full on regulation. Um, you yeah, know. certifications definitely definitely would help a lot um, for for a lot of people, but regulating it to a point like where you were saying, Billy, where um, there's somebody that. I forgot what uh what state or wherever it was that it was had in, regulations. Uh, Savannah, Georgia. And, yeah, uh, they basically have to come and dig their post holes, and then they have to have a home inspector come, and they have forty eight hours after they dig the holes to inspect them. Um, but they I haven't heard that one. That's, that's wild. But yeah. they can't do anything else after that, right? Um, so that's where I that's my standpoint on it. I'm all for certifications. Client education, making sure that client's like, oh, hey, do you have your fence certification? Yes. It's a super simple question to ask. It is very, hey, yeah, are you licensed? You- it, 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 like, it's not like you have to be like, oh, hey, pull out all these documents. It's just like, oh, hey, yeah, you can go to this website and you can check out my certification. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Which yeah, is look up like a, like a portal, like how we have in Florida for Sunbiz for businesses yeah. where you can just look up the business, see if it's a legit business. Yeah. The same concept is like, hey, look us up, Gentry Farmhouse. Which yeah, is, we're certified. We're up to date on everything. Right, but then that's really where, like, you know, AFA and FWA and organizations of such, you know, really, they do care and they do try to do that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. To where you can say, absolutely, we are, you know, we we build the ASTM standards. We are, you know, we do these things because we it's we we because we, yeah. we do care. We yeah. do go that extra mile. We do send our guys to training. We do try to uphold to uh, some, even though there's not an industry wide, st- you know, like a law standard, you know, like, we still going to hold ourselves to this, to this standard. Yeah. There's yeah. that like, there's and, that like gray line standard. Uh, yeah. You know, and, and speaking of that too, AFA and uh, FW and all that mm-hmm. stuff, uh, you. Yeah. Nah, different convo. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank I was going to say, I know you uh, like them, but. Yeah, just that's. Gotcha. I don't know what I'm doing with that just yet. Okay. I haven't made up my mind. I was offered a position and I, uh, I, I don't know if I want to take it or not. So I'm just kind of, I'm still, we got a lot of things working out with the shop just as it is moving shops. And so what's your feeling on the FWA? 
how yeah. much how much have you dove into with their websites and what they offer or anything? As an owner, not as much as I should, being honest. Yeah. You know, I've met uh, Mr. Brian Ferguson a time or two. He's an awesome dude. And I love the fact that what he's doing is absolutely going back to your previous question. How would you make it better? Follow his footsteps. Yeah. Follow his footsteps. Yeah. Absolutely. The man just got freaking health insurance for the for a, for a fencer. For That's a fencer awesome. who's not yeah. like, I haven't had insurance. I, I just got insurance this week. Because I got married a month ago and my wife has insurance. Yeah. Yep. And it is great insurance. And congratulations. I don't know if you well, looked at that, but like, man. Now, I haven't gotten into it like I should, but it's but you know, it's stuff like this. It's little things like that that, you know, it may not, even if it's not the greatest package in the world, any any help helps. Yeah, yeah any, absolutely. Yeah. Any Every help bit helps. of help, yep. You know, all there's, there's the, 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 the boot discounts. You know, that stuff like that is absolutely phenomenal. You know, like we give a $60 boot credit, you know, twice a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So for every, any employee, we will cut you, you know, bring us your receipt and we'll cut you a check for, you know, if you paid $200 boots, we'll give you 60 bucks of it. You know, that's not yeah. much, but for a small, you know, small outfit like us, it's definitely something. And the fact that he's done work that also, I mean, that's, that's, yeah. there's so many different things that Mr. Brian's doing with that. That's absolutely just really is a better for the industry. And I, I can't wait to meet him again. Talk more. I really hope that we get to go to Vegas this next yeah. year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm down we will go. start planning. We will it. go. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> you've been to what now? Three trainings now. Three, four, four. A lot. Like this <laughs> certified <laughs> trainings one, uh, but overall <laughs> trainings I've been to mm-hmm. several. Yeah, several. So, what was well, your two. what was your what was your absolute one that you took the most away from? Ooh, 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 ooh. Well, well, well. Now uh, I'm gonna business, talk about two. Okay, business and that's install. that's yeah. where I was gonna go with. That's where I was gonna go with was uh, install side was absolutely the time that you and I drove up to Indiana and we did a Mr. Fence training. We did okay. the no dig training um, back in May ish, June, May June, June something like that. That was yeah. a lot of fun. A lot on the install side of it. Obviously, you know we don't want to talk numbers and stuff like that. It's more like, hey. This is how you do this. This is what's worked well for us. Feel free to tweak it your own way and have, you know, to have at it. And that's, that's what's great about those things is people are like, oh, we well, have to do it to Sean way. It's like, no, you don't have to, but this is just a way that this worked for them. This is, you know, 20, 30 years of trial and error experience wrapped up into a weekend. Yeah. If a billion dollar guru said, hey, this works for us, check it out. It might be who of you to check it out. It might be a good just, idea. Just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> when cock and <laughs> there's a, 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 a book, I just finished. Actually, I just finished it today. What was it? It was uh, when arrogance and cock. When arrogance and ignorance come together, it's um, it's something about not being able to change your mind. I forget. I, uh, okay. I have to go back to it. But when the two come together, it makes just you, you'll you'll never open your mind to new things. Yeah. 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 And like that's one of like I the bet. good things about the training is you have like all these other people there. You have like three like you have guys that have been there for a week on the fence line you have guys that have been there for 25 years and you hear all their different tips and tricks and how they do it and like you said like you don't have to do everything just like how all the people trained yeah. to do it take what you get out of it tweak it to fit your style and yeah absolutely roll with it yeah, yeah. there's no there's no set in stone rule book of like it must be done like this or else no I mean, so absolutely. And that, that even goes the same, like with the business on the business sides of things, you know, uh, I would say we went to stain and steel experts back in February of this past year, or this year, whatever it was. Um, <laughs> friggin' I'm Florida boy and it's up there in like March. It's a hundred <laughs> degrees down here. We go up there to Tennessee. Like, Oh, it won't be bad. Be cool. I can start snowing on us. Oh no. Like, what the heck, man. Yeah. <laughs> that yeah. was, Oh, anyway. Uh, but that, was a lot of fun on the business side of things. Oh my God. You want to talk about getting motivated? If you have, even if you're not even in the staining game, don't even give two flying Fs about staining fences or decks or something like that. But you want to just get a better grasp and just get different perspectives on the business side of it. The experts in Anseal, their annual training event they hold um, up there in Tennessee, I, I will never not go now. I yeah. will always go every year. I don't care. That, that will forever always be on the calendar. I don't care if I don't go to Vegas. I don't care if I don't go to any of these really cool, crazy things. I will go to that. That We went the first time. That was so much fun. And just the takeaways we got from that, not only the, the, the guest speakers that they have there, 
I mean, um, uh, the contract, the contractor fight. Uh, that was a great book. The guy in the game. Uh, uh, sorry, my brain. Contractor I forget fight? his name too. Uh, yeah, I know. No, that's his, I'm not uh, doing That's his channel. Uh, that's the contractor fight channel. Oh, I, I thought um, they literally and, fought. No. It's, uh, <laughs> it, it, I'm gonna go to that. It, definitely. I cannot think of his name for the life of me. Right I've got now. it. Yeah. I've got. I've actually. I've got it on my on my nightstand on my uh, on my bookshelf next to my nightstand. Yeah. I've, read, I've read. I've read his book, and that was really fun. Getting to read and to, getting to learn about business. When you hear thing about business, what do you think about a guy in a three piece suit talking shit out of his? You know, you, yeah, you know. But no, whenever you got a guy who's been in the painting world for thirty years and is a self made millionaire, and he's like, "Hey, this is what's going on. You need to fix this, this, and this, and your business. And you need to do it now." And you're like, "Ah, that makes total sense." And you, you, t- you that just was just making it easy to one, comprehend. That was like just one of like the, the several speakers that was there that just absolutely like, and the dude's wearing a shirt that I wrote it on the board during one of our meetings we had the other week. Yeah. Time kills deals. Yeah. And that was absolutely. on this dude's shirt. And I was like, oh, I, didn't even, I didn't even know he was the speaker. Yeah. Seen him early in the day before people were going on stage. What man, I love that shirt, man. That's awesome. I was like, I was, I was and just, just talking to him about it, you know? Yeah. Go and sit down. They call him up on stage. I'm like, motherfucker. I was just talking to that yeah. dude a second ago. And I um, like it was an average show. Uh, the my sales, <laughs> yeah, the my sales and people were there. That was really neat. Uh, got, you know, going in full depth on how to you know do online quotes and estimates. That's something that we've talked about, but we never got into it until then. And Matt Warner has a lot of a lot of meeting wise things to offer, uh, like his like Monday morning meetings. He has a lot to uh, offer on that side of the thing. Mm-hmm. I, like, I love what he has to say about it. Yep. That was, that was a lot of fun. Uh, so there's, my, there's that, my salesman, um, there's a lot of them, you know? And then it's like, you know what? The biggest thing that I took away from that, as far as like the growth was the dunk tank. We got through, there was 200 people there. However many was there. And I was like one of 20 that got their hands in freezing cold stain and got to, Stain boards while I was there. I was like, this is freaking cool. Yeah. I like this. We brought the design back, gave it to you, said, hey, I want to build, let's build this, yep. this, and this. Two weeks later, we had a freaking dunk tank. Yeah. Yep. We Except for 20... ours was made out of like barrel, like oil barrels yeah. or whatever. I found a guy yeah, on Facebook it works, Market. It, works, it right? works great. It still is working a year later. Yeah, absolutely. We've, and then it was funny is now I'm seeing them pop up. Um, uh, Chris Gass in South Louisiana, they have yeah. one now. Uh, theirs looked really cool, very similar to ours and the one that's up there. Uh, those dudes are crushing it over in Louisiana over there. They're part of the uh, uh, Mr. Fence Academy team over there. Those guys are. Uh, but they, they got Dunk Tank now. Like, so we, we got ours back in February. And that, it's been and that's so cool because, you know, a couple of years ago, we started offering the Halco pre-stained pickets. And that, was, that was neat. Well, now I can remember like six months after we did that, you know, these pre stand pickets started popping up everywhere. I was like, well, everywhere. shit, Lows, okay. Everywhere. Yeah, and now yeah. the thing, I remember calling my Halco rep or the, the manager of the, uh, the branch. I'm like, dude, why am I seeing like 20 bunks of the Sunrise pre stand pickets at Lowe's? He goes, they're not there. I'm like, here's a photo of them, dog. Yep. <laughs> like, these are supposed to be, like, you told me when we signed on with you guys, these were exclusive. Oh, they're not being sold through us. I'm like, anyways, we being in control. I was like, understood. Well, then it was funny because they tried to sell those for like four fifty a piece or some shit, and they all molded. Oh no, Lowe's did. Yeah, all Lowe's. Oh, they, they all molded. No. they couldn't sell I them. I they remember couldn't sell them because they sat there and sat there and sat there, and I was like, no one's ever got trying to sell a pine no. picket for four dollars a piece. It ain't no. gonna work. No, not yeah, at all. And a six foot picket. Yeah, not even eight yeah. foot. Right? <laughs> yeah, but uh. <clears throat> So how, uh, tell me how you kind of separate being a business owner from a father. Cause we haven't, we haven't really gotten into any of that. Um, you have, uh, you have four kids. I do mm-hmm. have four boys. Yeah. Ages. Uh, my oldest is 12. He is, he's awesome. He is basically a he's slightly a smaller version of me. Yeah. With a little me. bit more twang. A lot more twang. What a lot more. <laughs> a lot more. <laughs> Boy, my oldest son called me. He got out southern twine. Hey, how you doing? And it's yes, so he funny. Does. That boy, I cannot wait for him to get a little bit older. He's going to be able to sling so much game. It's going to be, oh, it's going to be awesome. 
Little lady killer. <laughs> Little lady killer there. Can't wait. Uh, I have a set of twins, Liam and Latham. They are eight. And then I've got, I'm not even sure the camera's even on me over here. But I got a, yeah, that's yeah. actually why we're doing the podcast in my garage is I am a dad yep. of four. And I have, uh, my youngest will be two in January. And um, sleeping. watch him on the nanny cam. Watch him on the cam. Yep. He is out cold. And we were, that's so they actually brought the podcast to me just so I could even be part of it. So that's pretty yeah. neat. Well, my wife works, uh, Mariah, my wife, we work opposite shifts. So she works from seven o'clock at night to seven o'clock in the morning. And I work from whenever to whenever. <laughs> <laughs> I work from uh, early as hell late. till the job is done. <laughs> early to late. Pretty yeah. much. Um, but, you know, on the day, and luckily, with her being a nurse, she, unless she picks up overtime, she only works three nights a week. So that's a very, that's pretty manageable. You know what I mean? Her and I, you know, we see eye to eye 99, on 99% of things. I've, um, we just work together with the kids. Uh, having four kids and trying to run a growing business while still doing all that is absolutely exhausting. Yeah. Uh, say, I, I can only imagine that'll test your sanity. I'm to, sure. I'm sure. <laughs> to say the least, to, to go from dealing with, I mean, like my, my, my young, my, my infant is sick with an ear infection. And so luckily it was raining today. So we, I ended up not going into the office. I handled some stuff and phone calls and stuff from job nimbus from my phone and my iPad, you know, where I didn't have to go in and physically and handle some things. And, but it's like, I'm literally replying to emails and stuff while I'm at the doctor's office, you know, trying to deal with this. There was a certain point where, oh, well, you're a dad. You shouldn't be doing dad stuff on work time or work time on dad time. And it's like, I, I'm sorry. I can't. I, it's There's going to be certain times where I got to kind of blend the two of them. And I know people say you have to separate that, and you absolutely do. You have to separate and have your family time and have your business time. And I absolutely agree with that. There's times where it's impossible. Yeah, and you, absolutely. You have to accept that fact that, and I know it's not good. Trust me. I used to work offshore and not see my family for, I mean, I, my longest hitch I ran was 60 days out. Right. You know what I mean? Like there was six days I didn't see my kids. I didn't see my family. And you know, it sucks. Absolutely. But God damn, at some point you got to be a man, a man up. Mm -hmm. And this business, when you have your name on the side of those trucks, you got to take that phone call. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just, uh, unless you're multi-billionaires and you know, you've got this stuff running, you can turn that, you know what I mean? You still have to, I know pussy is such a, back and forth subject and honestly the best thing i can say is you're gonna mess up on the family side the kid side and the business side of it i know i am not perfect i try really hard to leave a lot of the work stuff at work um there's many time i will sit in the truck for like five ten minutes before i walk in just to get all that dumb stuff out yeah. I think a lot of us men do that. Yeah. Too, yeah. Yeah. And you yeah. have to, and you, you absolutely have to, and especially in this game. And mind you, again, we're four and a half years in. We just did, we're going to do $1.2 million this year. Yeah. I don't care what, there's a lot of stress load that comes behind. There's a lot of responsibility that comes behind that. You know, it does not take much in this game and you are out on your ass and you are upside down. This it can be a very fickle, it's a very lucrative, but it can also be a very, Anytime you're an entrepreneur, self-employed, it can be it can be absolutely scary. Yeah, I mean it's I mean it's a sink or swim mentality at the end of the day. So. Every day, and you, you and, and you know what? And that's really where it has to be with your kids. Is that you? I was having uh, my twins have a stepdad. Uh, my which is uh, which is an awesome, amazing stepdad, by the way. Yeah, Bobby's awesome. I love him to death. Bobby, he actually, if you're he watching, is, total kudos to your brother. He is uh, rad. And um, yeah, he's actually coming by here later tonight, I believe. Um, but uh. He was not, he's, he, uh, I'm not gonna get his personal, but he has a few health issues and he was in the hospital for a couple of days this past week. And I went up there and I seen him. Like, I went there and seen my kid's stepdad, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, I took him a Rubik's Cube. I was like, hey, man, you always tell me you don't got time to solve it. Now I got plenty of time. I don't want to hear no excuse. Anyway. And uh, <laughs> you for sure told him that too. Yeah. Word for I, word. I, I do not word for that. word, I believe that. <laughs> I love Rubik's Cube. Anyway. I've seen this man solve one while driving. Yeah. Just one hand one like this, like barely even looking at the just thing. And just solving it. Yeah, That's I love great. these kids. Yeah, I know you do. Um, but I was talking to him and I was telling him that, talking about the dad thing, you know, and <sighs> there, his thing was he's not, he's diabetic and he's not taking care of himself. Okay, and it is, and it put him in the hospital. It's not the first time. No, yeah, I know, I know. 
And now that he is married to my ex and my children see him as a stepfather, I never once had to have like an a-hole talk with him. But I went to the hospital and I had to have a, a dad talk with him. Right. right. He's, he's coming in. I've been a dad for 12 years. I'm 12 years deep in this game. I've been through a lot of... The, Three of my four kids were extreme preemies. You know what I mean? Like I've been through surgeries and hospitals. I've been through everything with kids. You know what I mean? You know, I, you know, whatever. I've been through a lot. And I had to talk to him. And I was like, dude, I don't care what you're doing in life now, man. You, you, you don't matter anymore. You have to take care of yourself. Yeah. And yeah. no matter what happens, you, you, you have to take care of yourself before you can take care of those kids. I said, what's going to happen if you don't take care, you don't get your diet under control and this shit keeps going south and we end up burying you. And then I got to explain to my kids why you're gone. Yeah. How is that fair to anybody? Yeah, I mean, it's like you, you've got, and this is for anybody. You, I don't care how hard it is, how much stupid shit it is. You, at some point, you've got to put your big boy panties on. You got to man the fuck up. Mm -hmm. I'm just allowed to cuss on this one. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Okay. You've got to man the fuck up. You have to. You absolutely. <laughs> he just said the F word. Oh my God. He said fuck. <laughs> <laughs> and. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> but uh, and, and it's the same thing with the business. You have to. If your shit's going south, tough shit. You got to. You got to man up. Yeah. Kids are. You know, stuff's going bad. You, you have to man up. And what I mean with that is you have to put all your personal emotions aside for the business and for your family and your kids, you have to put all the, you have to, you have to be able to prioritize all of that. And you're not going to get it right every day. You're not. No. Some days you're going to suck. Some days you're going to bicker with your wife, bicker with your kids, bicker with your coworkers. You know, you may, you know, try not to bicker with the customers, but you know, you're, you're going to have yeah. those days. But overall, like I preached to you guys, how do you separate? How do you do it? By knowing you suck. And knowing that you need to be 1% better every day. If you can be just do one thing different from yesterday, today, in a positive manner, that's one better thing you did. Then that one goes to two. Now two and before you know it, you're really starting to change who you are, your, your, your self-disciplines, your self-motivations, and you really find what's going to drive you, not just as a father, not just as, you know, oh, as a boss, but as a fucking man. Yeah. You're going to find what, what, what drives you. And that's just where that comes from. You have to be able to separate it the best you can, but you're not going to always get it right. And you also have to know that part also. That was a long answer for that. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no. Hey, <laughs> you're hey, good. Man, hey, man, that's why we're interviewing you, man. You do all the talking. We ask yeah. the questions and just sit here and listen. Um, and, and on that note, that actually brought up another question that I have. Um, so See, you... Take care of yourself. I'm drinking a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> you know that'll eat through uh, metal, right? Yeah. Uh, ass. <laughs> Yeah, it's basically acid, while we off sit here and have beers. Yeah. But uh, anyways, um, so as you said, the uh, be one percent better every day. Yeah. Uh, from the day prior. Um, you tell us that in the meetings and we do this, you know, every week when we have our weekly meetings. So on this same note, might as well just tell the world, what have you been doing to keep yourself one percent better Ooh, with uh, with work and everything? What have I? Yeah. Uh, well, going into that with that meeting that we had was really that was a, lot, that was a fun meeting. I enjoyed that one because it really it, was. it made everybody kind of stop and think. And go, oh shit! He's actually asking me a personal question, not a business like a per. Yeah. And it it's it's one percent better on everything. It's just one percent. And so, how have I been one percent better? I have. I quit drinking. As y'all guys have beers, I'm sipping on a coke. Yeah, it's caffeine and sugar, but now nah, damn, it's freaking coke. Yep. I have not had a sip of alcohol in um, since January of, of this year. So I was it's, about to say it's been almost a year. At yeah. January, the end of hunting season last year was my, was was I the last beer? And I was like, all right, well, I'm done. Yeah, and uh, and even before that, you weren't actually drinking. No, yeah, no, no, no. I mean, well, let's be serious. I haven't heavily drank in um, since I met you. Since my mom died. Yeah, and my wife left, and all that shit happened, and Mike's yeah. wife left. That's, that was I, I, and that was. Talking about having that time where you have to man up. That was that time whenever my mom died, wife left. Uh, my kid's mom was not in a good place at that time. Um, a lot of things were falling on me, and it was, I have to be the, at that moment in time, I was more, like the only rock my children had. And so it was like, I, again, one of those times you have to nut up. Yep. 
Um, but being 1% better, I've quit all alcohol. I haven't had a drop of alcohol since January, uh, beginning of this year. So this upcoming January will be one year. Um, the goal is to quit nicotine in January as well, but that didn't happen until about March, but I did quit. <laughs> You have, um, you've been really solid with that. I have been nicotine free since March. That was just trying to do that 1% better again, not just for you guys, not just for myself, but for the kids, for you guys, as if those, you know, those little getting away from those little distractions. Uh, that's actually how I taught myself Rubik's cube. Yep. yep. Was I remember that. every time a nicotine withdrawal would hit, I just grabbed the Rubik's cube and just fidget for a minute. And three days later I was solving it in less than four minutes. I was like, yep. Oh, yeah. yep. um, so that's actually how I helped kick nicotine. Um, Stuff as far as nowadays being 1% better, just making sure I'm doing what needs to be done in the business every day. Uh, one thing I knew I was really, I still struggle with is, um, you're gonna, this is going to sound horrible because it's like the basics of every <laughs> salesperson is calling the damn leads. Is so you get, Sometimes you get so wrapped up in putting out fires and other things that future prospect phone calls sometimes get put back. And then yeah. as bad as those are the bread and butter. Those are the ones you need. But I mean, but, I mean, but I, in the industry, it's really not that hard to understand. I mean, I mean yeah, like but, if you're in it, it makes sense. If you're not in it, it, like it doesn't make sense because, you know, you got, you got Mrs. Jones and then you got Mrs. Johnson Mrs. Jones, and they're both calling <laughs> at the same time. And then you have some phone number that you have no they're, idea who it is they're, and they're calling you for offense and you're like, shit, I don't even have the time to talk to you right now. Like. I need the money, but like it's so go go go. I need to handle Mrs. Jones and Mrs. Johnson before I even talk to you. I have a guy called today or messaged me today. Did a gate operator in May. Simple farm gate, swing gate, click button, nothing crazy. Just over. He had a few issues at first, no problem. I absolutely we corrected it. Went out there and they, hey, you know what we did? We kind of messed it up a little bit. My apologies. Fixed it. Everything. Well, now FedEx and UPS driver is forcibly shoving this farm gate open. Oh like on god. video, shoving it open. Oh my god! And it's our fault. I was like, um, it sounds like the FedEx driver's fault. Yeah, and I was like, uh, sir, no, it's, it's totally it's, our it's, fault. It's, 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 it's a gate <laughs> operator. It is designed to open and close the gate on command, right, not right. be a barrier. Right. It's a farm gate at that. Yeah. Like we, had, we had to custom weld a freaking bracket for it to mount. Like you know, that's, that's one of the things you're putting. I was, I was, I was a, that was two hours of texting back and forth in my life. All over this guy. Well, if this doesn't get fixed, I want a refund. And like, Dude, your gate's been working fine for seven months. And now because this guy forces it open, you want your money back? Like, yeah. that's not the way the world works, man. Right. It was like, what right. you okay, what you want is an upgraded lock. Like, okay, cool. We'll put a mag- magna lock, magna latch on there, and we'll la- we'll have it, we'll, we'll weld you up another custom thing Mount for a for a farm gate and we'll we'll set you up with that. It was like you don't I was like, oh, anyway, that's, that's getting, getting on a rant. That's getting on a rant. <laughs> but you're talking about those phone calls that take up so much time. Yeah. Is that again, mind you, my kid's sick today. I'm still trying to get him to the doctor and get all this stuff going while this guy's texting that a is a FedEx man shoved a gate open and it's my fault. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. just a dumb shit like that. But it and is it, it's, it's and it's it easy to get lost up in that and not to go back it to is, the leads whenever that happens. You know? Yeah, it's, it's it's really easy when everything's go, 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 and you have everything coming in from each and every direction it's like you start to you know get a little add brain and oops forgot about that oops forgot about that and it's it's definitely something that uh is not always the easiest to deal with but um i will i will say personally you've been doing a a heck of a lot better i wrote it down yeah yeah you used to keep a notepad i need to start doing that too well between a notepad and the whiteboard yeah. There's a notepad on the whiteboard, and that was one thing that I wanted to work on was my callbacks and making sure, you know, so yeah, I'm out there on the estimate. I'm like, all right, you know, you tr- you're trying to get the sale the same day. Obviously, like, I'm a salesman. My job is yeah. to get your money, sell you a product, get your money, and go on to the next one. You know what I mean? That is my job as sales in this thing. And so, you know, if I can't get your money, then awesome. We'll do it. Um, well, I need a little bit, you know, you get through rebuttals and, oh, most of the time, like with the wives, about that, I can conquer those pretty much. But the ones, well, we were going to get four estimates and we're not making this. I have rebuttals for those, but something's not even worth the argument. You know what I mean? When you, yeah. Whatever you can pick up on that person's, like, you know, you can really, it's okay. So when I tell them, all right, well, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, if I, it's today's Wednesday. If I don't hear from my Friday morning or by, um, by it all by Friday, let me get, can I call, call you then. Yeah, call me on Friday. Excellent, I'm going to call you Friday. And out of the time I get so wrapped up, I, don't, I forget to call. 
Yeah. And that's one of those things that I know I need to work on because that is potentially money that we're leaving on the table. That one you and I went to last week, told a guy call on Friday. Today's Tuesday. I haven't called him yet. It's like, fuck. Oh, crap. I thought about it this same morning. Time, that just hit me as soon as he said that, too. Morning. Yeah. And at the same time, we're all human. Like, yeah. Well, you know, so it's not like we're life animated robots. Yeah, but it's, it's like, oh, Friday at 9 a.m., I'm calling this person. Should Put, be. Boom, done. You know what I mean? Should be. I, and see, my mind, see, I am, I will, that's another. I am my own worst critic. I w- am and I always will be. I will critique. You can't, there is nothing you can say to me that's going to hurt my feeling. I promise you, I mean, 10 times harder on myself. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's about just about like the same for everybody as well. So, you know, I mean, it, 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 at the end of the day, shit happens and it's not about how much the shit happens. It's about how you can fix it. And, uh, and managing it. Like just, and just managing it. taking, yeah, everything yeah because some people you know crack mm-hmm. under pressure some don't and pressure builds diamonds hell yeah, yeah it does yeah hell yeah it does so uh complete change of subject yeah, Corey, sorry. what's your uh what's your favorite fence tool to use Ooh, like you personally not for the business what is your personal favorite fence tool to use can't just be a tool in general yeah sure the buzz buzz the buzz buzz. I love buzz. buzz buzz. Really? Why is that? It's, it's it, okay. So the buzz buzz is an oscillator, or also commonly known as a multi tool. Yeah. It is one interchangeable mm-hmm. blades. You can do everything from cut and sand, and I mean, you can do anything you want to do. And it's just in the cabinet world, you use it because again, mind you, I have installed thousands of cabinets. Okay. In the cabinet world, you use that little fucking thing all the time, man. Yeah. And it's just, I've got a video on my Facebook. I did a cabinet install one time for a homeowner and the lady was the sweetest little 70 something year old white curly hair, just, you know, Oh, ha, ha, little sweet little old lady, you know? <laughs> and it was so awesome because it was like a year after my, my, my mom died. And so, was, you know, I, I've always resonated with older people and, and I've got a video of her using an oscillator cutting shims. Oh, cause she God, asked about it. it. And so, I was let I, I was letting her I let her cut the spacer shims on the back of the cabinet, you know, with you know with the oscillator, with the, we call it the buzz buzz, and you know it's a, one of the first tools I let my kids use just because they're not going to freaking hurt themselves. I mean, you can use put a, a blade on it and you know put it on it your hand, it's not going to cut you. Yeah. So it's a good one for the kids to learn, and if they do hit themselves, they'll vibrate and scare them. Just let them know of tool awareness and you know where your hand. It's a, I just, the buzz, the buzz buzz is one of my favorite little tools. Buzz man. buzz is a buzz buzz. The oh, buzz yeah. buzz is a buzz buzz, man. Yeah, it it does. I, if that drawer wasn't locked over there. I got like two in that drawer right there. Yeah. Man. They're just great tools. We had if a, you guys haven't picked up, we pretty much nickname everything. every tool. Everything. Yeah. Every, trucks, everything. Tools, yeah. everything. They your, all have nicknames. Your truck's the armadillo yeah. because it looks, with the, the shell on it, it looks like yeah. a giant freaking uh, armadillo's back. Because it's, <laughs> it really it's been does. Rhino, the whole, all the toolbox been a rhino line. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's what happens when a used car lot wants to hide the rust. Oh, we'll just uh, rhino yeah, line. We'll it. just rhino yeah. line. <laughs> and uh, make them not shut properly. <laughs> no shit. Uh, we oh, have Frankenstein, like, which is like four different trucks in one. Uh, we have the pig, which is the old 24 year old diesel excursion truck. It pulls anything it's you hook Basically, behind. a monster truck. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's. Um, but everything's got nicknames too. Everything's it. got nicknames. We love it. We Absolutely. Love it. Uh, uh, so last and final question for you, and this might be a little, might be a little, like a little difficult. Where do you see yourself in the fence world in five years? Hmm. I don't. You don't. Explain. I. Do not see me every day in the fence world in five years. I'm not talking about on the fence line. No. I'm talking about like where do you see yourself in the fence world in five years? Silent partner letting you run it. All right. In five years, the goal is that we've talked about this in detail pretty extensively is to have uh, at least one, if not two more locations by then, having them running self-sufficient. We've already prospected where we want those two to go. To where it's local enough where we can be effect, effective, be it far enough away where we can diversify. We've talked about those. Um, those are goals I would love to push towards and to really fine tune our policies and procedures, of which I'm getting help on from other higher up fence professionals that have already done this. 
Um, I mean, not five years, man. In five years, we're probably gonna be big in distribution. That'd be that's 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 another internal goal of mine is to be big and more on the distribution side of things. Um, but as far as like where the old me would like to see this is to where I have other things I want to do with my life outside of fencing. I love fencing. I love the business. I will always be part of it to some degree. However, there are things that I still want to accomplish while I'm alive. Okay. That's Fair away enough. from fencing. It may be a little past five years. You know what I mean? Um, but I would like to be, I would like to be out of the day-to-day operations in five years. Okay. hundred yeah. percent. I would like to be out of them, having the teams run them, coming in once, twice a week, hanging out, seeing what's going on, seeing if I'm needed, you know, ch- you know, keeping, you know, making sure everything's on the up and up and past that, letting other people have that role of, of, of leadership and, and going into what, what, whatever the, f- the future of fencing holds, whether it's a hundred percent into the driven games, whether it's, you know, wh- whatever it is at that point, letting somebody else kind of take the baton. Cause there, there's, there's, I want to, I want to be retired, like not having to work by 45, 50. That's okay. my goal. It's not, it's not in the sixties and yeah, yeah. It's, I've got about our 10 years. I want to work. And then I want to work because I want to work. Right? Yeah. And right. so, and right. some of those goals don't 100% align with fencing and defensive world. I love fencing. I'll always be in it, but there are things I really want to do after I've, after I've accomplished these goals and I have left my mark here and it is running without me. There are other things I would like to dabble in. Nice. Nice. I like it. Nice. Yeah. Same here. Same here. Um, so we haven't done this part yet. Um, give us a, uh, Give us a shout out on all of your links. How do we how do we find you? How do we find us? You know, that is actually a phenomenal question for that guy right there. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Um, it actually is in the YouTube description. Um, and I'll go ahead anywhere else that this is posted. Uh, we'll go ahead and, and add that in there. Um, but the easiest way to do it, let me pull this up right here is https colon forward slash forward slash l i n k r dot e e slash gentry farmhouse basically link tree um but slash gentry farmhouse and you can also find them on just you know gentry farmhouse llc.com yep you guys want to know my favorite video of cordio it better not be the video of the squeaky voice. One. The squeaky voice one. I hate you so much. It's the fucking squeaky Ooh. voice one. Uh, so, so Dan, yeah. you wanna, you wanna, you wanna, you wanna tell everybody what you did before we go. Yeah, to, yeah. All the way in that. How, how much time do we have? Uh, we got about. We're about a fit, fifty-seven minutes. Uh, we got about ten minutes. Okay, I'm just curious. I go for yeah. it. Yeah, go for it. I'm just yeah. curious. Hey, hey, Corey, can you can everybody hear your name one more time? He's not going to talk. Wait, wait. Oh, he's so good. So we, 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 uh, we did drop a line of uh, Judge not Farmhouse we. merch. No, no, no. We did. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay. I was about yeah. to say, you No, did we, that. we dropped a, <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, I did the fun behind it. Um, oh, he's talking about dropping lines. Dropping so, lines. so as, as you obviously can all tell by all of our shirts matching today. There um, we go. We've We're got our modern flag. install shirts, one of the OG jackets, and the new jackets that you can actually find on our shop. Yeah. And, and um, they're super soft and super comfortable. God, I love, yeah. I love this hoodie. They're yeah. great. Uh, the, those hoodies are so comfortable. I think I'm actually going to buy one myself because... <laughs> My neighbor bought one yeah. and his wife's pissed off that he won't let her have it. Yeah. I, I can see why. Nice. The t-shirts are soft. Nice. I'm, I, I'm I honestly I hate wearing them. Yeah, I hate well, wearing it in the field because I don't want to make it like dirty or anything like that. You know, you have to make three shirts now, right? You yeah. Make one for Corey and one for Bailey. And one oh, for... I've got the blanks in my car right now. You I already got the blanks? them. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. By the way, if you're on our show, uh, yeah. we send you a t shirt. Yep. It's just been a very crazy week. I'm actually in the middle of moving, which uh, signed a lease today. The Congrats. No, that's the monster. Oh, I thought oh. that was the other one. I'm super happy for yeah. you for moving. Um, so yeah, I am uh, moving, signed the lease, and uh, we move in Monday. Nice. Um, but it's been a it's been a hectic week uh, to say the least. But um, no, back to uh, the previous one. Uh, so we we dropped a 
line of merchandise for Gentry Farmhouse. Um, I think we have a tank top, sweatpants, hoodie, T-shirt, water bottles, a.k.a. Uh, fence oh, we hydration. Have, we got a request on that, too, by the way. What's that? Light jackets. Ooh. Okay. A light water, like a windbreaker? Water, like a, no, like a waterproof... Uh, jacket, not something thick, kind of like those thinner Columbia style jackets. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? we can do that. Kind of like a North Face. Yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Gotcha. Yeah, the, we can work something out like that. that. I stole from you at that training event. Yes, <laughs> like that one. I know exactly. That what jacket I stole from you. Yeah, it's got like it's got like the wind. Did you at least give it back? But it's not no. like an actual wind. Oh. No, no, it's mine. No, 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 no. Oh. It's, 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 uh, it's, 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 it's in the closet somewhere. <laughs> I put it on and it, I said, I claim this yep. as my land. You left, I think you left it in the office one day, the old office. I either left it in the office or in your truck. One of the I two think I was taking the office and I, it was one of those, I was like, fuck, the priest. And I was like, oh, yeah. Billy's jacket, mine. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but uh, no, so, so back to everything. We dropped merch and I was, uh, we were all at a job site, all of us. And, um, I took 30 seconds to have Corey explain the merchandise and where you can find it and everything like that. And I'll put a link to that if you, Corey approves. I mean, it's I on TikTok. I probably right? will. It's on yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. I probably it's will. It's a whole regardless. video of him making me sound like this. Get your yeah. Fat ass back. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, welcome to Ginger Farm House. Ha ha. Yeah. That's so TikTok's was. got those crazy voice filters, and I just put it on there. And when I <laughs> when I showed Billy it as I was posting it, this man about died. It went on the way Dude. back to the shop in the truck driving, Dude, and about, he's driving and he's listening I'm to like it, coughing and choking. It was about it was about how it was last night. Yeah, basically, yeah. whenever you showed me all the sound effects, yeah, like this. Oh God, don't do it, please. Welcome to the Gatekeeper. <laughs> So it's kind of like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're like just that. having too much fun. We have way too much fun. I, with this thing. I, I legit spit my water out last night in your office whenever you did that. I was choking everywhere. Yeah, because I we were also just trying to figure out how to use it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and I hit a button that started playing, and we just went you with just it. Just freestyled with it. Yeah. Uh, it was a ton of fun. But uh, yeah, man, we're coming up on uh, the end. Is there anything else that yeah. you would like to add to this? Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, actually, that's something I was thinking about uh, just a second ago. If there is anyone out there who, I don't, I don't know how many views is going to get or anything of that nature, but people who are just starting or not even people who just starting, once they're just absolutely getting their ass kicked, it's going to happen. You're going to just feel like the weight of the world is just, Everything's just going to be too much to bear at times and you just can't do it. Whether it be trying to juggle family life with business life and employee lives because you have to, you're not a parent, but you also have to look out for your employees' well-being and everything you do. They come first before you do in the business just like your family comes first before you do in the family. So whenever, just know that whenever life is absolutely kicking your ass and you don't think that you're going to do it, just know that you can't. That you absolutely can. That, you know, so many people will start and quit and start and quit and they'll never get anywhere. They'll start this job and quit that one and start, you know, and they won't ever, you know, it, just stick it out. If you absolutely enjoy it and you like it, stick it out because you will make it. And you will, there's times people will congratulate us. Oh, you won best in Pensacola. Oh, you, we did, we're going to do 1.2. I, 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 even for me, it's hard to even give myself props for that because I don't feel like we deserve it. But at the same time, give yourself props. Know that you can make it through uh, the hard times. And just, I have a t-shirt that says embrace the suck. And that's one of my favorite t-shirts just because you have to embrace the good times and the absolutely just sucky times. You've got to roll with it. And just know that you can make it out. Like you can, you can really do good. Just take care of your people, take care of your customers and your name that you're trying to, your brand that you're building. And, you know, I never, I, when this started five years ago, I wouldn't think that we'd be sitting here on a freaking podcast. I'd never yeah. once in a million years ever envisioned Me that. Either. And yet here we are. And it's like, just, shit, man, we're, we're going to be in that five, you know, yeah. in a couple of years. Yeah. You know, I mean, just grind it out and just work towards that goal. And, you know, something that you taught me was writing down goals. So, Absolutely. Write it yeah. down. I mean, every, write it down, down every day. 
every day and at the beginning of the year in January, write down what you want to do for the year. Something yeah. far fetched, make it far fetched. Something you think is absolutely fucking stupid, write it down. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I want to well, do five million dollars. Cool. Write it there down. we go. Write it down. <laughs> write it down every day. Say I will do it. Not I want to. I will. Speak it. Well, uh, Mike, with that said, we are going to close things out. And again, that was fun. Thank you for having me, guys. Oh, bro, it's been an absolute blast. Um, you guys go give us a, a like, time. go give us a follow, hit that subscribe bell, do anything. Um, like if you would like to actually help us out with real dollar bills, uh, there dollar is dollar a vision. spot on our link tree. It's only $3 a month. Um, yeah. Start, like it it's all helps. a uh, like it all helps everything. Gate keeper podcast.com you can go on there and just you know support the channel if you want to or you can support us for free by liking yeah. sharing subscribing share it on everything um x facebook how'd you like come up with three dollars a month oh it, it's just it's like tears yeah, at the just, system like look i've been still we're we're still new at this yeah. podcasting it's thing just there we were just like yep pick that one yeah sure. <laughs> yeah yeah just started simple and nice and easy uh, but uh, we're gonna roll out here, Dan. You have the outro at this time, or do I have to help you with it? Yeah, yeah, I got it. I got it. I got to Take fences. I'll build them straight. Build them sturdy. Build them strong. Oh, he got and it. And take build it easy. Straight, build them straight. Hey, build man, them we will see you guys next week at uh, seven fifteen Central. Um, I'm not gonna drop who the interview is, uh, but I will see you guys at seven fifteen uh, Central next Tuesday. Y'all have a wonderful rest of your week. Don't work too hard, as always. We've been, been, we been, we been, no, been hanging and banging, brother. We've been, we've been, we've been hanging and banging, brother. Work My hard. <laughs> Hit the wrong one. Uh, All righty, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Uh,